Hello everyone, welcome to Stokes Honda North TV. I'm Chad Dobier, your host, and today we're talking about how to get the most money for your trade. It's really simple to do, but a lot of people don't know these easy steps. So let's help you out today and help you put a little more money in your pocket when trading or selling your vehicle. So here we go. So what you're seeing right now is two Hondas. You got the black Honda Civic and the silver Honda Accord. And from watching and looking right now on the video, they don't look very dirty. One vehicle is in pristine condition, just traded in, and the other is dirty. It's really pretty simple, and you need to take these steps because a lot of customers come in, they want the most money they can get for their car, they go online, they look at Kelly Blue Book, NADA.com, Auto Trader, and they say, well, this company told me I can get X, Y, and Z for my trade-in at uh, fair condition, good condition, excellent. But in many cases, their vehicle is not up to par to be able to get the amount of money that they would like to get. So I will show you and tell you what the differences are between these two vehicles and why one customer got more for the trade than the other. So let's see how this works out. So the clean car on this video today is this Honda Accord Coupe. The dirty trade-in vehicle is the Honda Civic Coupe. So let's go ahead and start off with the Honda Civic and let me show you some things that you could do to get more money for this particular car. First of all, how about try washing your vehicle, folks? It's pretty simple. Take it to the car wash cactus, take it out in your driveway at your house, wash your car. Again, these vehicles were just traded in over this past weekend and it's Monday today and we're filming them. Now, as you can see, it is dirty. You can see the bugs right there. You can see rock chips onto the actual hood, which now have caused it to start rusting. Let's, there we go. We'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. See the rust right there? So now the car dealership will have to actually get the hood possibly resprayed or touched up. So that's one indication right there that your trade-in value is dropping due to having to get paint work done on the car. So clean your vehicle. Put touch-up paint and rock chips. You also notice on this car, the fender is a little bit out of place. The wheels are dirty. Look at the tires, look at the rims, dirty. Again, this has to do with washing the car. So again, right now, just really dirty. You're gonna see some oxidation going on. See right here where the paint's fading? That is the clear coat fading down from the sun and things like that. So that is not dirt right there. Again, I'll rub my finger on that. That is staying, it's not going anywhere. That's because whoever owned this particular vehicle just did not put the extra time into keeping it clean and all the things like that. A black car definitely has to stay cleaner than a lot of other vehicles out there. So there's that one. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the vehicle sitting next to us. Again, these vehicles have not been through our reconditioning department. They are sitting just like they were when they were traded in on Saturday. You can tell right off the get-go that someone took this vehicle and had it washed and cleaned. You don't see a lot of um, dirt on the car. You don't see rain all over the vehicle. It is a clean Honda Accord. That right there lets the manager know that they've taken care of the vehicle and possibly give them a little extra money for that car. That's when you're looking online and trying to figure out trade-in value, what's gonna set you apart from the next car coming in that day. Now take a look at the tires for just a moment. I'm gonna show you this. Got a nice set of Michelin tires, plenty of tread left on the car. You know, I'm not saying you have to go and put brand new tires on your vehicle, but let me tell you, if you're trading in and you want to put a new set on the car, go for it because that's going to just bring the value up more for you. So it's always nice to bring the car in with the oil changed and have a new set of tires on there, or at least your tires aren't worn down bald like the Honda Civic over there. And I'll show you the tires in a minute. I know I didn't zoom up on them, but we're going to take a look at that in just a moment. So as you can tell right now, this Honda Accord is in great shape, nice and clean. The body looks good, no major dents, no major dings. No major scratches on this Honda. That's why I'm taking the camera and kind of just get some nice clean shots of this car because it's clean, folks. Again, look at the back tires. In great shape. 
Wow, nice and clean. The Honda Civic, again, we knew it was dirty, but look at the tires in the back of the Honda Civic here. There's not much room in there for me to get my finger down in that tire. These tires are worn down. They may even be the original tires that came with the car originally. They're Michelins, which are great tires, but again, they're worn down and they're even starting to crack right in there. So you think about it for just a moment. The car dealership will possibly have to put a new set of tires on the Honda Civic, but won't have to put new tires on the Accord. Again, that's gonna get you more money for your vehicle when trading it in. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the interiors. So we talked about having the exterior of your vehicle nice and clean when you bring it to the dealership. There you have it. Now let's take a look at the interior. This is a extremely important part of the process when appraising a vehicle. And look at this car that was traded in. The mats are dirty, still trash on the floor. If the manager or you would not want to sit inside this vehicle, why do you think you would get top dollar for your trade? Look at the back seat here, folks. I'm gonna zoom in and get a nice shot of that. What do you see right now? Hair is matted on the back seats of this Honda Civic. When hair is like this in a vehicle from your dog, let me tell you right now, it costs a pretty penny to get the reconditioning department to clean this up and get the smell out and put it back to where it needs to be so they can sell it out on the lot. Let's go ahead and hop in on the inside. Okay, so we're sitting on the inside of the car. I most likely have dog hair on me. And now your salesman and manager is not too pleased with that, having to walk back inside with that going on. So you can already imagine that the price of this vehicle is dropping. What's the next thing we notice? Right here, no rear view mirror. The rear view mirror and the visor are sitting on the seat right there. So two more things broken on the car that we have to put money into when trading the car in here at the dealership. Again, paper towels still in the car. The car is just not clean. I think everybody watching the video right now is kind of getting the drift here. Keeping the car clean is a good way to get more money for your trade-in. How about it? I don't think we got to go too much further on this Honda Civic to know it needs some cleaning done. It needs it done fast. Now we're going to take a look inside the Honda Accord. Big difference from the two vehicles. As you can see, no major dog hair inside the car. The mats are clean. Okay, someone has taken the time to clean this vehicle. We understand that people drive their cars every day just like I do and like everybody else does. But it's what makes the difference when you bring your vehicle in and they can see that, hey, this customer really took the time to have the car cleaned and they really would like to have the extra money for the vehicle. Okay, it makes a big difference, folks. It really does. So that Honda Accord is nice and clean, tip-top shape. Now let's take a second to look under the hood of the vehicle because any good used car manager is going to pop the hood on your car and take a look under the engine bay. Now we know that the black Honda Civic was extremely dirty on the exterior and interior of the car. So we can only expect under the hood to be just as dirty. Now one thing that they're going to do right off the get go is they're going to look at that sticker up on your window and they're saying when the black car had an oil change done. Now I just did that myself and as you can see on the screen right now, the vehicle has around 104,000 and some change on the mileage. The sticker says the vehicle should have had an oil change at around 103 or so. So right now we're already over the limit for the oil change. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what the oil looks like on the Honda Civic, if it's clean or dirty. I think we know what it is, but let's take a look anyways. Okay, we got our white rag right here. Let's take a look under here, see what the oil's looking like. And first of all, a good thing would be to do is find where the actual dipstick's at, which it's somewhere in this area. Here we go. So it's pretty noticeable right there. It's an orange in color. Let's go ahead and take a look. We'll go ahead and clean that off and then put it back in. Again, like I said, any good used car manager or appraiser will look at the oil on the vehicle make sure it's not milky or anything like that because sometimes people do have blown head gaskets and of course they don't tell us at the dealership and they trade the car in and then there you go. So let's take a look. We can see that here on our camera. 
as you can see, the, the oil, that's why I have a white cloth here, is, I mean, it looks somewhat normal. It's not really too dark, but it is a little darker than regular. So the car needs an oil change. There you go. So they will have to service the vehicle through the shop and get the oil changed and all that good stuff. And as you can see under here, let's go ahead and put this back in. Like we saw earlier, the exterior, the interior of the car is nice and dirty. We got leaves under here, all this stuff. Someone has sat this car under a tree and hasn't really given a whole toot about it. And then they may want a lot of money for their trade, but it just don't happen in the car biz, folks. You gotta keep the car clean. So as you just saw, the Honda Civic, just around 13 to 1500 miles over the uh, oil change. This car doesn't have a window sticker in the windshield, so I don't know exactly when the oil was changed. But, you know, as a manager looking at the vehicle and appraising this car with the exterior and interior clean, I can only imagine that under the hood is clean. Let's take a look for ourselves and see. Okay, so we're under the hood of the Honda. Here's our napkin. Has not been used yet. It's kind of like a magic trick if you think about it. But anyways, there's no magic here today. We're showing you cars. So let's take a look. Here's our dipstick. Now we'll go ahead and clean it off first on this one side here. Already noticing a huge difference in the oil. Okay? Right now I'm already seeing a nice clean oil look. And let's take a look here for ourselves. And of course I have to get it all over my hands. But hey, who's a, what's a car guy without a little oil on their hands, right? Let's take a look under here. Look at this. That's pretty clean. That's clean oil, okay? It's probably clean enough where you can stick it on your tongue. That's clean, folks. And as you can see under the hood, it's nice and clean under here. Of course, yes, there is some dirt and dust, sand and things like that. We live in the south. You're gonna get that, we're by the beaches. But the other car over there, totally different story. Both vehicles have similar mileage and over 100,000 miles. So I wanted to give you a perspective there on similar cars on years and mileage. So you can't say, well, one car is a really new vehicle, the other one's not. They're both pretty similar. It just depends on the owner of the vehicle. Now here's the next thing I want to break down to you today because this always happens at every car dealership you go to. The salesperson, the used car manager, the appraiser, whoever it is at the dealership when you're trading in your vehicle or selling your car is going to have this list right here. They're going to have some form of paper or something on an iPad or something like that which is going to have a checklist of questions to go down and things to look at when they're appraising your vehicle to give you the money you're looking for out of your car. Now let's go ahead and start from the top. Of course, customer's name, date, where you live at and all that. Now some of the questions they're going to ask you. What brought you to our dealership today? Doesn't really have anything to do with actually trading in your vehicle, but hey, everybody likes to know. Did you see us online? Did you see us on television? Things like that. But let's get on around that for just a moment and go ahead and get right into the nitty gritty of it. Equipment. What equipment's on the car? Is it automatic? Power locks, sunroof, manual, tilt, T-tops, AC, cruise, power steering, cassette, you know, basic stuff. What options are on the actual vehicle? Now let's get down right onto the top 11 questions that they're gonna ask you about your car. So make sure you think about these carefully and answer them truthfully. How many miles are on your car? Let them know. Has your car ever had any paint work done on it? The car dealership will be pulling a Carfax on your vehicle. So be honest with them and let them know. Look, I was in an accident back a couple years ago or last week or whatever, the vehicle had to go into the body shop. Let them know what happened on the car or if it was just a simple little fender bender, you know, something like that. Let them know what's going on. Again, they're gonna pull Carfax on your vehicle. If you had it if, it, if there was an accident on the car and you're the second owner and you didn't know about it, well then, hey, you didn't know. Anyways, okay, number three, has your car ever suffered body or frame damage? Back to question two, have your vehicle ever had frame damage on it? Those are serious questions because if they have, you may have a salvage title on your vehicle. The dealership needs to know that. Number four, has your car ever had a flood damage? Has it ever been in a flood? We just had a flood here in South Carolina not even a year ago. So there's a lot of cars out there that are flood vehicles that have been reconditioned and fixed and they're back on the road. So that's stuff right there. Number five, did you buy your vehicle new? 
You say, what's it matter to you? Well, it does matter because if you did buy a new, then you have a one owner vehicle, which is really nice when you're going to sell it on the lot. Number six, does your vehicle have any transmission problems? Does it jerk when you're driving? Does it thump in the gear? Things like that. Transmission problems, okay? We need to know those things. It's very important. If your car has transmissions problems with the vehicle, it could take the trade value down a lot. But be honest, okay? A lot of people trade in cars and don't even tell the dealership and then we're having to call them back and it just causes a big confusion. Be honest with the dealership. It really does pay off to be honest in the long run. Number seven, is there a spare tire and jack? That's important because again, if you want the top dollar for your trade, having a spare tire, having your jack is good to have in the car because then we don't have to buy one in our parts department and put it in the vehicle. Every car needs a spare tire, every car needs a jack. The same when you buy your vehicle at the dealership. Make sure they have a, a spare tire and a jack and the tools in there you need. It's a safety thing, folks. It's good to have. Number eight. May a prospective buyer contact you about your car? That says a lot about you. If you don't mind someone calling you about your vehicle, then that's a great thing. If you do, then maybe there's something up. I don't know. Number nine, does your car have any paint sealant or rust proofing applied? You may not know the answer to that question. If you do, let us know. Number 10, does your car have a balance on a service contract? You may say, what is a service contract? Well, when you bought your car new, maybe you bought a warranty plan or something like that on your vehicle. Maybe if you do have one on there and you're getting ready to trade in, did you know you could get a refund or get some money back from that service contract because you haven't finished paying for it yet? There you go. So that might put a little extra money in your pocket. Number 11, what equipment will be removed from your car? Do you have aftermarket wheels on the vehicle? Do you have seat covers on the car? Do you have an in-dash DVD player? What extra accessories are on your car that you will remove? If you're not gonna remove these extra accessories, that could make the value of your car go up some. If you take them off, please let us know because the car manager, the used car person, or the person you're praising the vehicle is putting a number on your car the way it sits right now at the dealership. So after they put a number on your car and then you say, oh, I'm gonna take those 22 inch rims off the car, I'm gonna take this off the car, this, that, this, that, well guess what? That's gonna go ahead and bring the trade value down again. So let us know that right there. And then they're gonna rate your condition of your vehicle. Is it above average, is it average, or is it below average? In this case, like the Honda Civic, the black one that we just looked at. Sign off on it, but there you go. So those are some of the top things they're gonna ask you about your car at any car dealership in the entire country. But we do it here at Stokes Honda North. There you have it. Folks, we thank you for watching this video today here at Stokes Honda North. Let me tell you, if you're trying to get the top dollar for your trade, now is the time to do it. Make sure you get the car clean. Check out some of those tips that I gave you on today's video. Hopefully that will help you to be able to get top dollar for your trade because it's important to do that. Make sure you have service records. If you do, if you go to Jiffy Lube and different places around town, keep those service records. And also take a Sharpie marker and black your name out and address and all those types of things so you have some privacy there. But for the most part, Everything we talked about today is gonna to help you get the most money for your trade-in. It's just really that simple. So please, take care of your vehicle. If you have people come into your house and you're doing a private party sale, wouldn't you clean the car up before someone comes to test drive it? Wouldn't you wanna sell it and get the most money for it so you can put that money down on a new vehicle or buy what you wanna buy? $1,000, $500, $2,000 extra is really a big deal when you're doing a car deal, folks. So make sure your car is ready, oil changed. I understand that you can't dump thousands of dollars into your vehicle. Sometimes not everybody's on that type of budget, but let me tell you, just the simplest things as cleaning your car, putting some tire shine on the tires, vacuuming the interior, make sure the dog doesn't have hair all over the place, okay? Just the simple things like that so when the manager gets in the vehicle to take it for a ride, he's not feeling like, whoa, okay? Just that kind of stuff can really make a big difference. I'm Chad Dolbier with Stokes Honda North TV. We thank you for watching this video. Subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook for more great content from Stokes Honda. 2016's a big year with us, so stay tuned. We'll see you soon.